Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be using the limit theorem to find out how several different pairs of functions compare to each other when using the limit theorem. So if we look at the wording of this question, I'll typically use something similar when I ask you about this, which says use the limit theorem to determine how the following pairs of functions compare asymptotically. So to do that, we're just going to evaluate a limit of one divided by the other. For my purposes, I'm always going to use the first function as f of n and the second function as g of n. So let's start going through these. We want to evaluate the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n to the fourth plus 4n cubed plus n squared divided by 9n cubed plus 7n squared plus 6n. In a calculus class, you might have learned some various strategies for analyzing limits of uh, rational functions. In this case, this is a polynomial divided by a polynomial, so it's a rational function. Uh, one way could be to use the Hopital's rule. That can be a bit tedious uh, when you have higher order polynomials, kind of like we do here. So instead, I'm going to do the very, very calc one level of doing this, which is to divide by the highest power of n appearing in the denominator. So this equals the limit as n goes to infinity of divide every single term in the fraction by the highest power in the denominator. That's the same as multiplying by one and therefore does not change the fraction. So if I divide two n to the fourth by n cubed, I get two n plus dividing this by n cubed, 4n cubed, I get 4, plus divide n squared by n cubed, and I have 1 over n, all divided by, divide everything in the denominator by n cubed, and we have 9, plus 7n squared over n cubed would give me 7 over n, plus 6n over n cubed would give me 6 over n squared. Now we have a convenient property, which is that anything divided by a power of n like this, so 1 over n, 7 over n and 6 over n squared, those all go to 0 as n goes to infinity. You're making the denominator infinitely large, and therefore the original quantity go becomes infinitesimally small. So what happens to everything else? 4 remains 4, 9 remains 9, but 2n, 2n goes to infinity. So if I continue evaluating this limit, I would get infinity plus 4, that's infinity, over 9 is still going to be infinity. And if we get infinity for the limit, recalling the limit theorem, that says that the numerator grows faster than the denominator. So I'm going to use f of n and g of n here to be a bit lazy in my notation. f of n, the first function, is in big omega of g of n. Nice and straightforward. Depend Again, depending on what sort of calculus you feel comfortable with. There are several different ways we could have solved for that. I chose this method because it's sort of the most low level version of calculus. Let's continue marching forward. For two, we have the limit as n goes to infinity of n to the one half over n to the one fourth. This is actually just rules of exponents. When you divide two different powers of the same base, so n to the one-half and n to the one-fourth, you can just subtract the exponents. Limit as n goes to infinity of n to the one-half minus a fourth, which is n to the one-fourth, which again equals infinity. So conveniently, we also get f of n is in big omega of g of n. That shouldn't be surprising. n to the one half is a larger exponent than n to the one fourth, and somewhere in our heads we probably have this idea that larger powers of n grow faster. So, good intuition to have. Let's look at three. This one we're dividing logarithms. So we have limit as n goes to infinity of log base two of n over log base 3 of n. 
This, maybe we struggle to remember certain log properties. So let's try and see if we can remember one. So we're going to write this off to the side. If you have log base A of B, you can rewrite that in a different log base with what's called the change of base formula for logs. I could rewrite this as log base C of B over log base C of A. So let's try and use that to rewrite one of the logs that is appearing in our problem in terms of the other log. So I'm going to rewrite the log base 2. So this equals limit as n goes to infinity of log base 3 of n over log base 3 of 2. That's using the formula we just recalled in orange there, substituting a to be 2, substituting b to be n, and c to be 3. So doing an exact copy-paste of what we had there. All over, keep the denominator still there, log base 3 of n. Now we get some convenient cancellation. The log base 3 of n and the log base 3 of n cancel and leave me with 1 over log base 3 of 2. Now, what happens to that constant as n changes? Nothing. It's a constant. So we get 1 over log base 3 of 2. And just the fact that we had that change of base formula, it tells us in some sense that the only difference between different log bases is some factor of a constant. That's it. So this is not surprising that they grow at roughly the same rate. This constant is greater than zero. It is, to note that it's greater than zero, log base three of one would be zero, and log is an increasing function, so anything larger than one plugged into a log would give me a positive number. So, my conclusion is that the function f of n, the first log, is in theta of the second log. Now, let's do the next problem. Undo, so make that line better. The next one is having us compare log base 2 of n and log base 2 of n squared. For these functions, we need to remember more log rules. Maybe somewhere deep in the recesses of your mind, you remember that you can pull powers out of a log. I can rewrite the bottom as 2 log base 2 of n. And just as before, we get some sweet cancellation there between the log base 2 of n's. So this equals the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 2, which again, the constant 1 half doesn't change as n goes to infinity, so we get 1 half. And again, as with part 3, f of n is in theta of g of n. Let's do some more. Five is really similar. What we're doing is comparing log base 2 of n and then log base 2 of n quantity squared. Limit as n goes to infinity of log base 2 of n over quantity log base 2 of n squared. I again get some sweet cancellation here. You may not be comfortable with this because they're logs, but we have thing divided by thing squared. The result of that is 1 over thing. It doesn't matter that I called it log base 2 of n, I could have called it flubity flarm, and it would work out the exact same.
What happens here, we're doing 1 divided by log base 2 of n, as n goes to infinity. And this might take a bit of digging deep in the memory banks, but log base log of anything, as that anything goes to infinity, will give me infinity. So this equals 1 over infinity, which, again, if you remember some calculus, will give us 0. In a better world, you'd want to be careful about how does it approach uh, these values, but it doesn't matter too much. So, we get 0. This is the one case we haven't had yet. This means that the first function grows more slowly than the second function. So, our conclusion is f of n is n big O of g of n. And again, remember, f of n is always the thing we are putting in the numerator for these purposes. Let's continue marching forward. Problem 6. For problem 6 here, what we're going to do is first learn what it is. This is log compared to something that's not a log. So maybe our log rules won't help us so much here. log base 2 of n compared to n to the 0.1. Here we encounter a road bump, which is these functions do not behave nicely together. How can we deal with this? This is where we might need to flash back to calculus to some of our favorites from there. In, in particular, we're going to use L'Hopital's rule to approach this. In order to use L'Hopital's rule, what must happen is that the beginning fraction must be in an indeterminate form, or sorry, the beginning limit. One of, one of the indeterminate forms, in fact, probably the only two we will see in this class will be infinity over infinity or zero over zero. So what happens if I were to naively pretend like everything was okay and plug in infinity, whatever that means, I would get infinity over infinity. I always write this in quotes so that I know I'm telling the reader of my work. I'm not claiming that this makes any sense to say. So when we get that, we can use the Hopital's rule. I will encourage you so that you can keep track of your own work and that I understand what you did to notify me when you use the Hopital's rule. The way I typically do this is I write LHR for the Hopital's rule. What is the Hopital's rule? It says that when you get an indeterminate form, such as infinity over infinity, what you can do is take the derivative of the numerator and divide by the derivative of the denominator, and the limit of that new fraction is the same as the limit of the original fraction. So I'm going to take the limit of the numerator, not the limit, the derivative of the numerator, and this, you gotta dig deep into your minds if you gotta remember what this, uh, derivative is, it's going to be 1 over law, uh, ln of 2 times n. You might remember that the derivative of ln of n would be 1 over n. It, when you have a non-natural base for the log, you get some sort of weird fudge factor of ln of the base. The reason for that being that you would have to use the change of base formula to take that derivative. Divided by the derivative of n to the 0.1, maybe that we're more comfortable with. That's 0.1n to the negative 0.9. Let's do the re requisite bookkeeping here. To collect together all of my like terms, I have a n to the negative 0.9 in the no denominator. I can bring that into bring that all together as 1 over 0.1 ln of 2 and then n to the 0.1. By dividing by 0.1 n to the negative 0.9, I would need to add n to the one, sorry, the numerator of the thing in the top part of the fraction, the n, to the n to the negative 0.9. So, this is n to some power in the denominator. That's going to go towards 0. That means that the bottom function is the one that is growing much, much faster. So my conclusion here, 
f of n is in big O of g of n. The denominator is the more quickly growing thing. 